This is David Russell, Global Head of Market Strategy for TradeStation. And today we'll look at major events for investors and traders. Stocks held their ground last week as investors rotated to value plays and away from major growth companies. The S&P 500 fell half a percent in the holiday shorted period between Friday, May 24th and Friday, May 31st. It was the first drop in six weeks. At one point, the index was down more than 2%, but it clawed back on Friday afternoon. A few things were going on. First, Salesforce.com missed revenue estimates for the first time since 2006 and issued weak guidance. The news sent shockwaves through the software space, triggering the biggest decline since October 2022 when the Federal Reserve was still hiking interest rates. This is a big deal because companies like Salesforce have grown steadily for years by selling software as a service to enterprise clients. These names trade at relatively high multiples, which makes them vulnerable to weakening growth. Notice on this chart how the stock has remained below its high from late 2021. Big indexes like the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100, on the other hand, have broken out. That could reflect waning demand by investors. Second, interest rates stalled as the economic data and inflation softened. First quarter gross domestic product was revised down from plus 1.5% to plus 1.3%. The price component and consumption measures were also lowered. Another reading of inflation, the personal consumption expenditures index for April showed core prices slightly below estimates. Those numbers bolstered hopes the Fed Reserve will be able to cut at least once this year. The yield on the 10-year Treasury note also stayed below its peak from late April. Attention will next move overseas, with the European Central Bank expected to cut rates on Thursday. After that, we have the big employment report on Friday, followed on June 12 by the really big events, May's inflation report, and another Fed meeting. Last week was good for traditional retailers. Best Buy had its biggest jump since 2020 after improving profitability. Earnings were 11% higher than consensus, even with revenue missing by about 1%. The electronics chain also suggested it could benefit as people upgrade laptops to take advantage of AI functionality. Speaking of laptops and AI, HP beat estimates. It cited higher demand as users replace old hardware. Ralph Lauren, Bath and Body Works, and Target were some other strong retail names. Energy was the top sector last week, rebounding from a slide over the previous two months. Marathon Oil jumped 13% after accepting a $22.5 billion takeover by ConocoPhillips. Home builders and real estate investment trusts bounced as well. Technology was the worst performing sector overall, sliding more than 2%. Software names led the declines, but chip makers also got dragged lower. American Airlines fell the most in the S and P 500 after cutting guidance and projecting lower revenue per seat mile. The shares slid 17%, their biggest drop in almost four years, according to TradeStation data. And now let's chart the market. A few patterns on the S and P 500 may suggest that bulls remain in control. First, the index inched lower and at one point hit its lowest level since May 9th. But then buyers stepped in, providing support at a recent weekly low. That kind of tight price action was reminiscent of the period between November and March. Second, Friday saw a lower low and higher high than the previous session. It was a bullish outside day, another potentially positive signal. Third, the index stayed above its 21-day exponential moving average, a short-term trend indicator. And now let's turn to the week ahead which has some key news for interest rates and the bigger macro picture. The Institute for Supply Management's Manufacturing Index is due this morning, along with construction spending. Tuesday brings factory orders and earnings from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. There are three things on Wednesday, ADP's private sector payrolls report, the Institute for Supply Management service sector report, and crude oil inventories. Dollar Tree and Lululemon report earnings, Thursday's big item is likely to happen across the Atlantic, where the European Central Bank is expected to cut interest rates for the first time in almost five years. It could be an important milestone after central banks aggressively tightened policy to fight inflation coming out of the pandemic. Could American policymakers follow? Initial jobless claims are also due in the United States. Friday brings the important employment report, 
which features non-farm payrolls, unemployment, and wages. These can be important numbers for investors trying to figure out where inflation and interest rates will go. They could be especially important now, given the inflation report and Fed meeting on June 12. Lots of events are coming that could have a big impact on rates and the stock market. As this period of high inflation and high interest rates ending, or are we stuck in a replay of the 1970s? We'll know a lot more by the middle of June. Thanks for watching. Please visit tradestation.com for more.